Like many of the other features in Microsoft Word, spelling and grammar have options that control how they function. You can change the options for spelling and grammar very easily. Let's choose File to go backstage and choose Options. You'll find the spelling options under Proofing. There are three broad sets of options for how spelling and grammar work in Microsoft Word. Let's talk first about the spelling options that are specific to Microsoft Word. You'll find these here. So when you are correcting spelling and grammar in Word, Word checks the spelling as you type and flags spelling problems by changing the icon here on the status bar. You can use contextual spelling, which lets Word work a little harder to try to determine if a word is right or wrong. Grammar errors are flagged with a green underline as you type. And finally, anytime you check spelling, grammar is checked also. These are settings that control how Word functions when you do a spelling check. There are a few other choices that you can make. In addition to choosing grammar, you can choose grammar and style both. And if you click OK here, then this will be your new setting for checking grammar and style in all of your documents. Style would check for things like jargon and contractions and other things that are used in less formal documents. In the past, Word had its own custom dictionaries. So did Excel, so did PowerPoint. In Office 2010, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook share a dictionary. And they also share some specific settings about how the dictionary is used. So if I change a setting here, I'm changing it for all of my Office applications. And if I change this kind of a setting, a proofing setting in Microsoft Excel, I'm also changing it for Word, whether I intend to or not. So you want to know that these settings are good for all of your Office applications. To ignore uppercase words, which are usually abbreviations, or to ignore any word that contains a number, or to ignore URLs and not try to spell check them. As long as these settings work for you, both for Microsoft Office programs and for Microsoft Word, there's really little reason to change any of them. There are five different types of autocorrect options. Autocorrect are things that Word does automatically for you. Sometimes you'll have the choice to undo the change that Word made, but these changes are made without asking you first. First, we have auto format options that say that anytime I type quotes, curve them in around the words. Anytime I type two hyphens, replace them with a dash. So as I'm opening a document created in another application or an earlier version of Word, Word is applying these auto format options for me. It applies those same options and some additional options when I type. So earlier when we were typing bulleted lists by beginning them with an asterisk, that's an option here. Numbered lists, I type one period space and Word is creating a numbered list for me. If any of those features are problematic for you in terms of the way you work, this is where you would come to turn them off. Auto format as you type. Math autocorrect is a series of shortcut keys that can be used in the equation editor in Microsoft Word, and if you do a lot of mathematical or scientific equations, you can enable this checkbox to turn them on everywhere. You'll find here shortcuts you can type for all of the Greek letters and for many, many symbols that are used. It's an incredibly long list to support scientific work and mathematical work. Actions is simply a list of types of text that Word is looking for that it will flag for you. So for example, if you type a financial symbol, a stock market ticker, and then you right click on that, there might be a link that would allow you to go look for that stock online. These were called smart tags in prior versions of Word. Finally, autocorrect, which is the heart of the matter. This is correction that happens on the fly as you type. If you're typing a sentence and you type the first two letters of a word in capital letters and then the remainder in lowercase, Word assumes, ah, they held on to the shift key just a bit too long. And that word is fixed to having only the first letter be uppercase. If you work for an organization that has two capital letters at the start of its name and then the remainder are lowercase like a logo type, you can click exceptions and fix that here. Word automatically capitalizes the first letter of sentences, which is not necessarily helpful when I'm transcribing some poetry. So I'll turn this off from time to time and then back on. The first letter of any word in a table cell, if I type the name of a day, Monday, Wednesday, Word will automatically uppercase it. 
And if it looks like I've been typing with caps lock on, Word takes care of that too. Then we have a list of autocorrect terms that we've set up here in Microsoft Word. So earlier when I spell checked my document and I told Word to take my misspelling of document that was D-O-U-C-M-E-N-T and automatically replace it anytime I typed that incorrectly. It was added right here to this autocorrect list. So this is all of Word's best learning from my use of spell check. I can wait until I make a mistake and add it here, but I can also create my own shortcut keys that I want to use in Microsoft Word. For example, if I type a left parens, lowercase c, right parens, and press the spacebar, Word converts it to the copyright mark. Open parens TM is a trademark symbol. I can have Word automatically replace text that I type with other text if I wish. So, for example, I could say if I type, I'd like you to type North by Northwest, which is one of our departments here. If I add this to the list, then anytime I type slash NNW, Word will automatically, without asking me, replace that text with North by Northwest. So you can do this for a company name, for your own name, for any long chunk of text, and you can even replace some text with formatted text as well. The reason the slash is there is so that if you type NNW for any other reason, it won't automatically convert it. You're unlikely to type a slash followed by three letters in the normal course of typing, unless you are typing part of a URL. So I can maintain this autocorrect list. I can remove terms from the autocorrect list if they conflict with other terms. And notice even that there are places where it's two words that often are typed together accidentally, replace those with one space. So you can replace a string of words with another string of words. As you work with Microsoft Word, don't be afraid to make adjustments to the custom dictionary so that it reflects the jargon used in your industry rather than having you replace those words on a regular basis. If you have a day that you'd like to create autocorrect entries, it's a great thing to plan out some of the shortcuts that you'd like to create and to enter them all here and add them to your dictionary in Microsoft Word 2010.